What's going on everybody? Welcome to another edition of Axe Creation. This is a special edition of Axe Creation for it's the first of five lessons for the True Fire Next Guitar Instructor Contest. The link and all the information is down in the description, so make sure you check that out if you dig what's going on. Vote, share it around, and I thank you for all your continued support. So, that being said, let's get started. As you can see by the title, we're going to be talking about using multiple meters. Now, I know that can seem intimidating, but it's really not, and the idea that's going on here is relatively pretty simple. So, the multiple meters come in where the phrasing or the rhythm of the riff that I'm playing, the chord progression that I'm playing, is in 3-4 and then 5-4. And all that means is the feel or the count of what's going on is 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And hopefully you heard by what the drums were doing over what I was playing, the drums were actually accenting that feel. And what's cool about this whole example, and that's something that I like to do a lot in composition, is that 3 plus 5 equals 8. A measure of 4 and a measure of 4 equals 8. So what you heard what the drums are doing on the repeat of this example was the drums switched to a 4-4 four, four feel against what I was playing. And that creates a maybe a more driving feel, but you have this, you know, multiple meter idea going on. So you have multiple meters with the guitars and the drums, and then you also have multiple meter with what you're actually playing on the guitar. So the chords that I'm playing are a C sharp minor 9 chord. And I'm taking advantage of some open string voicings here. So our chord is 4, 6, 8, and then open, open. And then while my ring finger is sitting here not doing anything, I'm going to grab it, put it on the 7th fret of the high string, create a little melody as I play. And as I strum through this, here's my rhythm. It's 1, 2, and 3, and 1, 2, and, and 4, and 5, and. And right, with that, right there, what I'm doing is I'm playing a little melody on the high string. I'm letting the B ring out open and playing 4, 7, 4, open. And that's my four and five and. So we have this one, two, and three, and one, two, and three, and four, and five, and. That's going to repeat. The only thing we're going to do is we're going to create a variation on the melody. Instead of, we're going to play right there, but we're going to use octaves instead. And the way I'm playing the octaves, it just makes it easier for what I'm playing, is we're going to grab with our ring finger nine on our D string, and then the B the 7th fret of the high string. And I do a little hybrid pick in there. You don't have to if you mute it correctly. You can strum through it and you can... Right there. The second chord, we're going to play play around with a couple chords, but it's essentially the same chord the whole time. It just sounds a little different because we're removing some of the tension. It's, essentially it's an A sharp 11 chord. You can think of it as an A major 7 sharp 11 chord, and the voicing is open A, 2 on our D, 4-4 four, four on, our, on our G and B string, and open E. And like I said, this 4th fret on our D string is our sharp 11 chord, which is a tritone. And then I'm going to grab my pinky, instead of the open E, grab 4. Right there, I'm still playing an A chord, but we're basically switching to an A major 9 chord. And which is open A, 4 on the G string, 2 on our B, and open E. You know, so you have that subtle tension of the sharp 11 chord. And then it resolves to the overly happy and soft sounding major 9 chord. And the rhythm through that is all the same as the intro, and what we do there at the very end of it is instead of going 3 and 5, 3 and 5, the very end of it is going to go 3, 4, 3, 4, 3, 4, right? And I do a little E major 7 arpeggio as a turnaround for the whole thing, and that's in 3, 4, 1, and 2, and 3, and. Right? So what I'm doing there is on our A string, 
six seven on our D string six nine on our G string eight nine. And that resolves real nicely back to the C sharp minor chord. So let me play it for you real slow. And if you didn't catch the drums changing in the beginning of the video, don't worry, we're going to do it again right after I'm done talking. In the link below and on my site, you'll have the backing tracks for this. You'll have the, just an example so you can hear everything together. You'll have the, the tabs for the guitar as well. Okay, so definitely check out the link below. And I thank you for your future support. And I will see you next time. Thanks a lot.